Hello. Ah, nice to be here. Uh, yeah, I'm Potch, developer advocate at Glitch. The goal this week is to play with the framework Svelte. I'm just gonna jump right into it. I'm gonna pull up the website for Svelte and sort of talk about what that is and why I think it's cool. Uh, I haven't dug too far in. I'm saving a lot of the learning for today's stream. Uh, Svelte describes itself as cybernetically enhanced web apps. Um, the uh, the thing that's appealing to me about Svelte, uh, you know, compared to all the other, well, not compared to, but uh, the thing about Svelte that makes it different from other um, UI frameworks out there is that it is all about the idea that, hey, uh, you know, the framework is great for the developer, but is the framework great for the end user? Not really. Like, the end user doesn't care that there's a framework. So why not have a framework while you're building and when you compile for the web, kind of just like get rid of all the frameworky bits. I think Svelte's cool because it gives the developers a framework, but when it compiles, it compiles out to just sort of vanilla code. There's really, really a whole lot of runtime uh, underneath the hood. So you can sort of picture in a normal app, you've kind of got a stack here, the layers of an application, right? You've got the layers of application, uh, uh, like shipped, you've got the code that you've written, the framework, and then like the actual like platform, the browser you're running on top of. Uh, Svelte, I think is cool because um, while you're writing, you get this little bit of framework, but really it kind of, I, I described it as dissolving, right? Um, the framework actually sort of tries to remove itself and compile a way to as close to just the native runtime code as possible. So you got your code and the like the actual web and there isn't a whole lot of intermediary. And I think that is really cool. Um, so yeah, self.dev lets you write less code, uh, does not include a virtual DOM. It's gonna actually generate um, vanilla JS uh, and they're describing it as truly reactive. Um, and their reactive pattern is actually kind of clever. And we'll take a look at an example before we dive into uh, the glitch part of this, just cause I thought this was a neat thing. Um, so we're going to go to a, to a reactive assignment example. Well, let's start with Hello World. Um, if you're not familiar with the idea of sort of the single file component world of frameworks, they're sort of, they were a little bit new to me uh, at first, but there's this idea that um, if you're going to have a compiler, add, this, like, well, add some niceties to it, right? So like as opposed to having to write a JavaScript file, you can write a .svelte file or in view, I believe it's a .view file. There are a couple frameworks that do a similar thing. Um, and that actually lets you to put script and HTML and styles all in the same page, right? So I can style this and say, if you'll notice, it's probably actually an HTML tag, <laughs> HTML page underneath the hood, right? I can say an H1 is color blue. That's gonna recompile, cool. And so you have a script that defines how the component works, uh, a style that tells what it looks like, and in this case, a uh, property. So we've got hello, we've got hello world. Um, and it's pretty simple, right? And the, the, the output for this uh, is actually, I, th I feel like reasonably, uh, reasonably pleasant, right? We've got a little tiny bit of runtime code, just this tiniest bit of runtime code that is, that is letting you do really basic things like create elements. It's just helping you make elements in text. Um, and then your code, and you can see my code is not a whole lot, right? Like name equals world, app equals spell component, um, it creates a thing, that's it. There's like nothing else to it. And in fact, this is technically my code too. Hell, HTML, hello, name. This is what it spits out. Uh, and this obviously minifies really nicely all these calls to the same functions and calls to the same functions and all that kind of stuff. Can I actually, can I, can I minify it with the compiler options down here? No, but hopefully you see that this is code that would minify really well. It's nicely formatted right now because we have a nice output. Um, and then uh, the CSS, it actually is doing some CSS namespacing under the hood as well. Um, so that style I applied to, um, that style I applied to uh, the H1 uh, actually applies in a scoped way that other H1s on the page would not be affected. So yeah, I think that's kind of cool. Uh, the reactive stuff is where I think this stuff really shines. Uh, here's an example of what it looks like. Um, so we've got a script that has, a, the component has something in it that lets me keep track of how often it's been counted. Um, there's a handle click functioner that 
increments that count. And you can see that when I click, it's going to trigger the handler. Um, and when I click, you know, you can see it even has a little bit of pluralization code here. I'm going to click and it's just going to update. Um, a lot of other frameworks use a, a virtual DOM for this. Um, they're using a DOM diffing. Um, what Svelte is actually doing is actually building a dependency tree underneath the hood. I'll pull up the JS. Uh, and what that means is um, when count changes, it knows what what DOM needs to be updated, right? It's actually like, there's like code pads optimized for these sorts of things. And the way it does that is, I can find the example of our my handle click function here. Um, and you're gonna see in here, you're gonna see a function called handle click. And here it is. And look, it's been rewritten. Um, it's now it's now a call to what's called invalidate. And what that's doing is saying, hey, this state up, this state value called handle click, or this state value called count um, is actually uh, needs to be updated and we're invalidating it like it's cached. And we're saying, hey, the, anywhere that uses count in any format needs to be updated because count is being changed. And here's the new value for count. And underneath the hood, invalidate is uh, going through and changing things. And so you can actually see down here um, where where count is actually being used. You can see that the pri it's this primary button. Um, we'll definitely have to regenerate this button or at least keep up, keep it up because um, we see that the count is being used. And then here you see P changed count. I, I, I find this really interesting. The, the code that generates is super neat to me and I wanted to build some stuff with it today. Um, and uh, just see what it's like to use it. So uh, I uh, I don't always do this, but this week I did a little bit of um, did a little bit of uh, pre work, <laughs> let's say. Um, and in that sense, I uh, made actually a basic starter. So Svelte has a template on GitHub. Uh, hello, hello, HVP seventeen. Thank you for following. Uh, yeah. So they have a they have a project on GitHub. Um, that uh, is actually just a template for building basic applications with Svelte, um, and it concludes effectively all the files. You can instantiate this locally to your file system, clone it, remix it. Um, what I did was I actually pulled this in from uh, GitHub into Glitch. Uh, Glitch has a nice button right here. It lets you say clone from Git repo, and I was able to pull in the Svelte.js slash template repository. What that gave me um, is a project, cancel, uh, this project right here, I'm gonna jump into edit and show you around. Um, I had to make some small modifications. Glitch has an auto restarting server uh, by default that lets it refresh the page. So I decided to use that instead of the built-in um, auto refresh. Uh, what that means is that my watch. I, I added a watch.json file, which is a special Glitch file that tells Glitch what files to check out for to look for, to restart the server. Uh, it's looking for data files, JS files, and .svelte files. Um, it's ignoring the public folder, which is generated in a, a disk in case there is one of those. And then um, in package.json, I made a modification where uh, I'm using npm run all for the start command. Uh, a lot of these, uh, a lot of uh, the a lot of projects uh, will sort of have a dev command. That's really what's meant to be for local development. But because uh, Glitch is both local development and production, um, we're actually going to use the start command. Um, and so I rewrote the start command to build and then serve the project. And because Felt is built on rollup uh, and is sort of relatively lightweight and clever, uh, you can see that it actually restarts really quickly. So in this hello world, uh, I'm going to do something simple and just uh, go to here and say. Hello, comma, name. And what you're going to see in the logs, if I'm scrolling to the bottom, is it's going to rebuild. And once it's rebuilt, the server is going to restart back up and you're going to get the refresh. So you can see over here, now it says hello, comma, world. And I could just as easily say blue. And it's going to think for a second. I also have it set to debounce. I don't want every keystroke restarting my server. So after a second of changes, it's going to rebuild. Um, so is it is it 100% live? No. But does it let me make basic edits and quickly see the results? It sure does. Um, uh, I think, so I actually don't want to mess with this project too much because I actually want other people to uh, be able to use this as starters for themselves. So first thing first, I'm going to um, just drop a link to this project uh, into the chat. 
Uh, uh, John Nicholas asks, it's a recompile. Yes, that is a full recompile. Um, it is completely rebuilding the JS and CSS. There is some sort of incremental hot reload stuff out there. Um, the basic example that I'm using is just going to do a complete rebuild. Um, uh, hot reloads can be nice, but yeah, I think it's fast. Like uh, glitch containers are not super CPU heavy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, like, you know, we don't allot a lot of CPU, and yet that it, that it rebuilds that quickly and reloads the thing, I think, is pretty impressive and shows that this is really about moving moving lightweight and moving quickly. So I'm going to copy this uh, project page just real quick and throw that into the, uh, throw that into here and uh, add that to my stack, my big stack of, uh, of URLs that I keep uh, in the bottom of the page. So we're actually going to remix uh, the template starter um, and build a project on top of that. So it's going to think for a second. It's going to, ooh, light quesadilla. Nice name. The healthy lunch. So now we are actually going to be hanging out in light quesadilla. Um, what I am going to do is drop the link to that in the channel. And if you'd like to follow along in the code, you can click that link and you'll actually be given a read only version of the glitch editor and you can watch uh, the code live and actually click around and look at the code and see what's going on on your own machines. I highly encourage you to do so. And I'm going to throw that onto, I'm going to throw light quesadilla onto the uh, current project. That is what we're going to be working with. Uh, before I 100% dig in, uh, it is time for that YouTube plug. Yes, uh, if you like these streams or you miss a stream and want to watch it later, um, we uh, have glitch.com is our, uh, you can go to youtube.com slash c slash glitch.com and go to the Glitch channel. Uh, all of my live streams are recorded um, and you can watch them later and have a nice time. Um, uh, there's a little bit of light editing for the assorted stream drops and stuff. So please, uh, you should check out glitch.com and subscribe. All kinds of cool stuff will be posted there. All right, back into light quesadilla. Uh, okay, so it's interesting. I'm not getting, really wish I was getting, um, really wish I was getting syntax highlighting for the dots felt here. You can see it's not really showing me anything. I don't, that's kind of, it's kind of a bummer. I'm hoping maybe if I refresh, I get a, Nice syntax highlighter. Uh, John Nicholas asks, trying to turn light KCD into something in particular. I have a project that I've been working on on the side that's coming up right where I think I might want to bring in a framework. Uh, and I'm so, and uh, let me very quickly show what I have right now. I mean, I'll skip it. But um, I'm really into the idea of getting into constructing my own crossword puzzles. I think it's a lot of fun. I think crosswords are neat. I think a lot of crossword puzzles um, are sort of, I think a lot of people who are make crossword puzzles are fixed in like, 80s New York City references because that's where the New York Times crossword puzzle lives. Um, I'd love to do some more modern uh, crossword puzzles. So what I want to build is actually a tool that lets me author crossword puzzles um, and potentially even lets other people load them up and solve them. So what I'd love to try to do in Svelte today is uh, build a basic crossword puzzle editor. And we'll, we'll see how far we can get. But that's going to be my goal. I understand that that is somewhat ambitious. <laughs> so uh, we'll start off with the app. I think we'll leave to be the same. Um, you know, we're going to have an app. Uh, the application is going to contain probably the grid and some editors and menus and stuff like that. So uh, here we are. Um, now we are going to play with things let's see Blur. so they have the idea of props by doing exports so we're going to say export let puzzle and let us load puzzle data into um let us load uh puzzle data into our uh, application and we're going to say let title say title grid I'm gonna just get clues, because um, I think a puzzle, crossword puzzle is mostly a title, a grid of letters and things, and clues. So I'm gonna say let title grid and clues, and unpack those from our puzzle. And uh, now we, instead of using hello name, we can say title. Okay, so I'm gonna leave tools open, so just in a low page logs, in case I make errors, we can see what's going on down there. Right now, um, you can see 
that we have no text on the screen. You may have an, actually an error. I actually don't know if we have an error. I may need to open the dev tools as well. We're just gonna keep everything open down at the bottom and see what we've got. So logs, logs tiny and dev tools tiny. And let's, um, looks like we don't have uh, a title. I think that's if you go to main.js, it's because we don't have a puzzle. So we're gonna say puzzle. And we're gonna temporarily just scaffold the puzzle like this. Um, my puzzle and just leave it like that for the moment. No semicolon required. It's rebuilding and let's see if we get something nice to see on the screen again once it's reloaded. Uh, we, we do, hello, my puzzle, cool. Um, it's not gonna be hello, it's just gonna be my puzzle. Um, and then we're gonna want to have, I'm gonna say, oh, well, you know what, let's make a component for this. This is gonna be grid um, and it's gonna say, data equals grid. We're gonna, ins we're gonna create a new component called, um, called grid. So we're gonna need the grid, uh, make a grid component. I actually don't know how uh, component, uh, nested into components work. So let's take a look. It looks exactly like you'd think. Import thing from thing.thing, .thing. cool. So we can say import grid from grid.svelte and make a new file called grid.svelte. Now we're gonna have a basic uh, grid component and the grid is can you contain your letters and blocks and stuff like that. Um, so we, grid will not import itself, that's a mess. Um, uh, I f export let, we called it data. It's weird. I don't, I don't know what we're going to call that. We're going to leave it. You know what? Let's call it cells. Let's call the grid. Let's say the grid is made up of cells. I think that's better than data. Data is so generic. So uh, we now have um, let's cells. Um, and maybe we need to capture. I'm going to say that we want to capture uh, the we need the size also because we need to know how many cells wide and tall the puzzle is. So let's say export size, and let's go up here and say uh, puzzle my puzzle, and size is gonna be 15. I think a classic, classic crossword puzzle is 15. Cells, size equals size. Unpack that value. And we can see, oh, we have, a, we have an error. Failed build script. Block was left open. Oh, I have not done that. Just to make sure this is working. Uh, and grid is using itself, which I don't want to do. So let's do div class equals grid. And don't need the style for this at the moment. I oh, need to close my grid. And let's say, I think if this is classic JSX, I should be able to say cells dot for each or cells dot map, I should say, cells dot map. And for every cell, we can output the um, inner cell. Cells are gonna be, we'll actually create a cell component. So we're gonna say, Uh, and then we're gonna make a cell real quick. So um, import cell from just like this. I'm gonna make a. Uh, we're gonna make a. Uh, cell component. All right. Um, and let's see how do we, let's see how we can send like a whole object in. I'm just gonna take a look at dynamic attributes, declaring props. That looks like the docs I want for this. So you can see spread props. This is actually what I want. I know the term for this. 
Yeah, so you can see name, version, speed, website. And it's going to pull all of those things in and apply them. Um, and so the actual info thing has those individual props. That is cool. That is what I want. Um, so you can see that again, just a little fast here. Name, version, speed, website. So what sorts of things, um, what more sorts of things do we need to get out to JS from HTML with curlies? Oh, you know what? Uh, you're probably right, John Nicholas. I do see an error in the logs. <laughs> you are correct. So this is going to be that. Thank you. And this is going to be uh, the spread props looks like that. So I can spread cell. And that's going to pass all of the cell data in. We haven't really defined what that is yet, but it's going to be a boon that we do. Let's see. Um, I think I want. Thank you. Yes, it should. Uh, Nicola, uh, P. Sab P. Sabatini. Thank you so much for the uh, the copilot there. I absolutely do need to make name that correctly. Um, let's say index, let's say, okay, so index, which is going to be which cell it is, um, export let um, type, whether it's going to block or uh, a block or a letter, right? We have two kinds of things. Is it a block? Is it a letter? Um, export um, value, export let value. Um, it's going to be which letter it is, um, and then export let clue. And that's going to be the clue number. Uh, if the clue number is set, um, then we know that uh, we need to put the little number in the corner to indicate that that cell is, is a, uh, that cell is a, uh, is a clue, is a clued cell. So you know the, the yeah. So it's going to be div class equals cell. Um, I'm not sure how to do conditionals. So we're going to take a look at, because I need to, if there's a clue, I want to, or if it's a clue, I want to um, put the little number in the corner. So let's see how we do um, if blocks. Um, that more or less looks like I, wow, that's nice. Okay, that's, that's snazzy. So let's take a look and say, um, if clue, so if clue is set, um, then we will add a little, I'm gonna use maybe I or B, let's, or maybe span, we'll just span. Um, and we'll just say, let me do this a lazy way for now, say span. And then I'm gonna say, um, can I do conditional classes? That'd be cool. Do, 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 do. Right, I want to have a conditional class because I want to, oh, okay, I'll do this as a big if block. That's what I'll do. So I'm gonna go find those ifs, right? And it's gonna look something like this. Let's not over clever this. Let's just say if, ooh, can't type. Uh, if, I know I missed a curly there, that's okay. Um, and we're gonna, so if, and the condition is gonna be if type equals block. Um, we're gonna output this and it's gonna be div class cell block. And then if it's a, otherwise with bottom block, we'll output this and that way I can just say value. My app is taking a while to stop, clean up, clean up, clean up. Let's see, we still have errors. Let's take a look at those arcs, shall we? Um, roll up C failed at the self build script. What's my error? 
uh, export size, right? I just didn't say let. This hasn't been building the whole time. Hopefully this all looks okay. Still errors, still errors. Sell. Parse error unexpected token. Oh, that's interesting. So the map trick did not work as I would have hoped. So let's see how you do loops. I got a little greedy there and assumed I could just do a loop and that might not be true. That's okay. Vested components. HTML tags. Oh, I see. That's interesting. Um, dynamic attributes. Oh, okay. So you totally can um, just drop. Oh, there's all kinds of nice shortcuts here. Not what I'm looking for, though. I want. I want loops, right? Or keyed each. Oh, it's called an each block. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So the the whole map trick was in fact not even correct. It's actually going to look something. I should have copied all the logic there. It's going to look actually something like this. Cells as cell. And then I can grab this little instantiation. Perfect, and it actually gives me the index, so I can say index equals i. Or, actually, since I just learned about the nice unpacking rules, I can actually say clean up this and see if we compile. Yes, John, John Cliss, I totally agree. The examples page is really nice. Uh, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a strong, I am a strong copy pasta person. <laughs> um, so being able to start, ah, being able to start uh, from a bunch of like fundaments and compose them is like my thing. Um, so, okay. Cell is not exported by source cell dot svelte. Okay, I must, this is just where I made an idiot. Oh, sorry. It's implicit, so it's actually that. How are we doing? Better? Much better. Uh, you can't tell because there's no data over here, but uh, we're doing better. That's cool. So. R is undefined, grid.svelte. Do we have an R in here? Or is this where we're getting into the, the funk? Oh, I mean, cells is undefined. I'm wondering if that's because cells is undefined. So maybe we need to pass it in cells. Let's pass it in. Um. Right now, we know it's going to be uh, a bunch of blank cells. So I'm going to go to my main and say cells. Um, this is just me being a little bit lazy. Uh, but I'm going to say let empty equals new array 15 to 15. Um, and then Um, empty dot fill type letter nothing. So now we're gonna have an array full of things, and I can say cells empty. Start with an empty puzzle. That should make me a nice empty puzzle. Hopefully, we don't get ours undefined anymore. Let me refresh to see if I still get that error. Sure do. Grid.svel 11.9. So grid.svel 11. 9. So it actually gives me nice, e, uh, nice stuff. So it is happening on this. It is happening here. Um, 
I think I is a magic value, so I might need to actually use I. Awalijo, thank you much for following. Let's see if that helps. It does not, but let's press forward. Maybe we're not passing in something else that we should be passing in. So I'm not going to worry about it too much quite yet. Um, and I am going to also console uh, log cells. And now let's actually start out, let's start doing something with our grid. So we're going to say grid order 1px solid. Solid, what's the word I'm looking for? Solid black or FF out is zero, zero, zero. So we know that it's got a size. And let's say with, uh, for the time being, I just want this to have a size. So I'm just gonna say 512 pixels, height, set, set same. At some point I wanna actually do something special with that. So it's responsive for the time being, this is fine. Um, Okay, R is still undefined. So now we're, oh, look at that. Cells is undefined. That's interesting. Guess that's not terribly surprising. And what line is that happening in? Grids fell 18 each cells, right? Um, let's cells, let's initialize that as an empty array on the off chance that helps. Set a default. Hey, it absolutely did. Okay, so also 512, a little big. Um, so let's just do this now. We're gonna say uh, size and say, I don't know, 90 VW. And then we're gonna use the uh, custom variable size. So I can say size. Um, actually, I'm gonna save size because size is the variable I'm using to reference how many cells is something in it. So I'm gonna say width. And say if um, I am for the moment, you are correct. If you're wondering, gosh, isn't he assuming? Isn't he assuming a particular shape puzzle? And yes, I am. I'm assuming a square puzzle because I want to ship. That's all right. Um, okay, rebuilding, rebuilding, rebuilding. You already see the puzzle is a much more manageable shape. Um, uh, it is going to be a grid, so. Uh, what syntax is that? The syntax I'm using is, uh, this is C it's actually CSS custom variable properties that is built into CSS in modern browsers. It's really, really slick and lets you do what I just did. Um, and you'll see that I'm gonna go a little bit even further with that, with the idea that I can actually do the following. Style equals, um, and I can say, um, I can say size, size. I think this is cool. So what I'm actually gonna do is when I instantiate this grid, pass in um, a variable that I'm going to initialize, but um, good initialize, that is one, even though that's uh, sort of, and this is where it gets cool. So when I instantiate my grid, you can see here, I'm saying size is size by using the prop property value. And now I can say display grid, grid template rows, and so now I can actually say repeat var size one, one equal division. So that's gonna say 15 equally spaced rows or n equally spaced rows where n is my size variable. And I can do that with columns as well. And so with this little bit of code, um, if I give my cells a style, uh, I can say, Border Oh, I need to style that obviously. <laughs> uh cell. Uh, I'm actually gener I'm actually auto generating a flexible grid, which I think is completely dope. So let's see, does all that compile for me? It does. The grid is still empty. We can actually inspect it to see what's going on. 
Uh, what's cool, I don't know if you can see this, I'm gonna really quickly zoom in. I'm, I always forget whether this kind of zoom works. But you can see that it's, the value size is actually being passed in here. You know, I'm not sure if screen capture, it does. So you can see, um, I'm actually, you can see size has actually been passed in to uh, this uh, variable. There are no cells yet. I agree, there are no cells yet. <laughs> So we're going to figure out why my grid didn't, when I updated cells, when I console.log cells, it dutifully reports that there are none. Uh, when I go to app, have I, when I, you can see here, aha, but what I, I know the error. Uh, when I instantiate my app, I use the word cells, and it should be grid. It should be an empty grid, not an empty bunch of empty cells. So, fingers crossed that this works. Aha, and it did. Oh, that's very satisfying. Okay, so um, uh, now that I'm, I have all my variables named correctly, <laughs> we've got a crossword puzzle grid. Uh, this is very great. Um, and you'll notice that uh, at the time being, if I, for whatever reason, just to demonstrate that, yes, I'm using the magic number 15 all over the place here. Let's say I switch it to being a seven by seven crossword puzzle. Um, the, the styles are actually going to update because I'm passing that variable in and automatically update to that. Um, I think this is tremendously satisfying uh, to have the JS and CSS working hand in hand with these custom properties that you can pass back and forth. I just think it's the best. Um, modern CSS is really, really powerful when paired with a, with a decent UI framework. So we've now got a bunch of cells. I know, I love multi-cursor. Multi-cursor is like my favorite, John Nicholas. It's, I use it all the time. Um, uh, I, it's like, it's the lightweight find and, ref, find and replace. So back to our big grid. I don't love this double line thing that's going on here. I don't know if you can see that where these are really thick lines. I'm actually going to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna say, uh, background um, empty and say grid gap one pixel and then uh, take the borders off the cells but set them to have a background of white and if they're a block obviously not white don't have any blocks yet that's okay Getting that warning, I think I'm moving that, pushing that CPU pretty hard. That's okay. Cool. So now we have a nice crossword puzzle grid. I love it. Okay. Right now, the crossword puzzle grid has no information in it whatsoever. Uh, I am going to do a little off screening here because I have a function that, given a crossword puzzle grid, uh, can figure out which cells are should be clues. Um, I don't want to. I don't know. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll write it on screen. I'm not opposed to writing it on screen, but it, it will be functioning. It'll be logic that lives inside of the grill, the grid. Um, so one of the things I'd like is um, to be able to have keyboard support so I can edit this. We're going to play with keyboard events and all that kind of stuff too. But we're going to start by having a function called renumber cells. And renumber cells will be a thing that computes, will be a thing that uh, computes uh, the uh, numbers for the cells. So it'll, it'll produce that clue number. Um, and so um, cells currently only know their index, and we know the size of the puzzle. So this should, that should be enough information. Let's do this. Okay, so, so it's going to be cells dot for each cell, and we need we need the index of the cell as well. So cell x. And we'll need a way to be notified when 
um, cells change and stuff to do the renumbering, but we're just gonna do this to start. So renumber cells. Um, so for each cell, we can make a decision. Uh, when do crossword puzzle clues have um, let clue equals. Um, when do crossword puzzle cells uh, have uh, numbers? It's when they are at the top of the puzzle, at the left of the puzzle, or um, whether a block is above them or to their left. So let's code that up. Uh, we can say if, I say if um, index, so actually we can actually say, uh, we know, because we know the size, we can say let row equals um, index divided by the size. We can just floor that number. I'll write math.floor. We're gonna drop the remainder, right? We're rounding down to figure out what row we're on. And we're going to say let call equals math. Dot, oh, not math.floor, we're gonna say index and modulo it by the size of the puzzle to figure out what column we're on. And now we can say row equals zero or call equals zero. And we can say, um, cell dot clue equals clue and then increment clue and so if we just write this take this code as it is right now and say um renumber cells just when we instantiate a component we can renumber the cells we have errors let's take a look at those errors are i probably have a js formatting error I guess I'm not getting hints for those. Unexpected token. Just at all unexpected token. All right, I'm gonna make this console bigger so I can see what the heck is yelling at me about. Oh, and it keeps doing it. That's very annoying. Um, oh, cells dot four. Oh, right, I need an arrow. This is an arrow function. Fatter of my four each is missing. You've even spotted it before me. Thank you. You said a teeny. All right, and they're all 29. <laughs> Obviously, uh, my logic, not flawless. What do you think? Um, if the row is zero or the column is zero, cell.clue equals clue and clue is incremented. Uh, my guess that this is that the binding being more more clever than it should be, where when I update this value clue, it's making them all be the same number. But also they're all, I feel like, I feel like I'm seeing another issue here, which is that both of these numbers are uniformly oh and also I'm just gonna say since we're renumbering the cells we need to uh unset it also just on just in case just in case we're getting into that sort of issue okay so now you'll see that none of them are numbered um, we're definitely running into an issue here where uh, this is that JavaScript binding thing. I agree that it is, and we're definitely getting, running into a funky, a funky situation. Uh, let's take a look at how what we need to do. My guess is I need to play with a key to each block and take advantage of keys. I'm gonna guess that I have to do with keys. Um, so they're not all the same thing. We're gonna at least take a look at that first. Um, value, unkeyed, thing. Oh, and that's how you say what the key is? That's interesting. Do you see that? That's neat. So you like pass in parentheses to say what the thing, the keys, this key is. We're going to take a look to see if that helps. 
Um, it also which means when we generate our empty grid, we need to be a little bit more clever. Um, M T dot each C I. We're gonna say um, C dot index. I love a puzzle, don't you? We no longer have to pass this, but we do want to say cell.index, and we can unspread. I'm just hoping that this helps. It may not be the ultimate solution, but we probably wanted to key it anyway, so I'm not complaining that we had to do that. I just think that's gonna help. Extract the body of a loopazone function, calling the function, passing the current value. That might work. I do like that. Um, let's see if that works. That's a, that's a lightweight solution. There's a good chance that this will work. I wonder if there's a way to have special attributes also, but we'll start with just seeing if this works. Uh, renumber cell, and actually, we actually use the same function. And then we say plus plus. And the cool part is if we get stuck, we're on, if we get stuck after this, I'm gonna pull up the generated code because I think the generated code is super readable. And let's just pull up the generated code and see what we are facing. We can say cell. That clue equals num. I want to see if this works. If I comment this line out, does it go back to doing the funky thing where everyone gets the same value? And it's all 29. Yep, okay. So this is a good opportunity for us to take a look at the generated code. I think I think Svelte generates really cool code, uh, really nice to read code. So we can say, um, I think it's bundle.js. It does. I would love to have that minified. Let's see if we can figure out how to, unmit, how to minify that. Uh, production. We'll just not minify. There. And we're also not using live reload, so I'm just gonna remove live reload. Still starting, that's okay. And let's take a look at that bundle again. That's not the right thing at all. Uh, bundle.js. Aha! Here's my generated code. Not terrible. Let's go see if we can find that cell. So I'm gonna say renumber cell. Oh yeah, look down here. <laughs> so let instance, yeah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, let free, I'm gonna bump the font size up for all for everyone watching at home. So here's my, here's my code, but then down here it says, if cell in props invalidate cells, cells prop cells. Um, and it's unpacking cells and size. Okay, so um, clue equals one. Cell clue. What is going on? This doesn't actually, I don't feel like I'm actually
I think I do know what it is. I think I do know what it is. Oh, that's if that's the case, that's actually really funny. Oh, that's actually really funny if, it's, if this is what it is. So, this is what I think is happening. I have filled every single cell with the same object. Literally the same object. Right? Literally the same object. So triple equals the same object. Which means every single cell is being backed by the same one p single piece of data. <laughs> so when I update one, of course they all update because they're all backed by the exact same piece of data. That is very, very funny to me. So if I say, let's try this instead. I think Phil is not doing what I was hoping it would do. Oh, that's really, really funny. Okay. Um, empty I equals. And then index. Why not? Let's keep the index because I actually think that's valuable to keep around. <sighs> I think I got a little bit clever with using the, my usage of array fill and it tripped me up. Aha! And in fact, that is exactly what happened. Okay, so Svelte was actually behaving the way we would, we would have liked it, which is cool. Means I didn't have to rewrite this the way I rewrote this because it wasn't a tracked property. Um, cell was not a tracked properly, or clue. The clue variable inside of renumber cells is not a tracked property, so it was not, it's not a prop of the object, and therefore I can just use it like a variable. But when every, when every element on the page is backed by the exact same piece of data, you get, that was really funny. That's, that's a, I, haven't, I don't think I've had that bug before. That's a cool bug. Remember that one for next time I'm debugging. Add that to the list of, well, it could be this problems. And then. Um, oh, I said undefined, which is fine. I think even null would be fine, but. Uh, we didn't spend too long on that. And we learned something, we learned something valuable. Okay, so. I don't think I want the global. I want the grid. Grid has this. I wonder if I can access that within the cell. Let's find out, shall we? Because my cell's the font, uh, cell. Or just, I guess I could just say dot clue because these are auto namespacing. Um, but I should be able to say do, do, do. Um, I'm going to say position relative because then that lets me say position absolute on the clue. Top 1px, left 1px. Font size. Now I'm curious if I can access that variable width. If I can, I can do something like this. Calc, pull in the variable width and say 20, divide it by 20 and use that as my font size, except for the fact that I'm Rebuilding, rebuilding, rebuilding. No, it would appear that this is not a valid font size because width is not available to it. Uh, that's okay, that's completely fine. I'm gonna inspect these, just see what's going on. Or it's not refreshing because I auto, I loaded it in another window. Nope, gonna inspect this and see what's afoot. Oh yeah, look, inherited from div with 90VW. But you can see that the, oh, it's just a span. I, I never called it clue. Just called it span. P17, I know the styles are scoped, 
But because these things are literally nested on the page, the cascade applies, which is unintuitive, certainly. Um, but yeah, look, it actually does work. I know, I know that I know that's a little unintuitive, but the the CSS custom properties are are not affected by scope; they're affected by DOM structure. So what that means, and I think I lost my refresh loop here, which is kind of a bummer. Not sure what happened, but that's okay. I will pop this open and uncheck and check and see if that helps. And you can see that I'm actually trying to get the effect that I want. But yeah, um, because one of them is nested within the other, the variable does carry, which is not, like I said, I don't think, I don't think that's intuitive, though it is true. <laughs> And so just this letting me um, really crank down the size of these things. And really what I actually probably want to do is say var, right? We're really having fun here. It's actually gonna be var width divided by var size divided by, I don't know, three. Um, I'm getting a lot of complaints now because Terser is not being used. Fine, we'll just comment those out. Yeah, that's a good size for numbers. I think that's a good size for numbers. If you haven't played with CSS custom properties, I highly recommend it. I feel like they're really a game changer for being able to make um, both dynamic and fluid layouts. They're some of my favorite, some of my uh, favorite things that could be added to CSS in recent memory and very, very widely supported. So I can, I can really recommend them. Okay, so we don't have, a, now let's actually get into interactive stuff. I feel like we're in hour two of this stream. An hour two of this stream is the hour when which, ooh, my resizing is a little funky. There we go. Um, an hour two of this stream is where we're gonna make some interactivity here. Um, so uh, right now we don't have, seem to have a way of selecting an individual cell. Um, and even if we did, we wouldn't be able to tell because. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say that my grid should be accessible because I wanna be able to use the keyboard with this. So I'm going to say tab index equals zero on the, uh, and now it doesn't refresh. Gosh, I don't, I don't always understand why it does or doesn't auto refresh, but you can see I'm now getting that little like, um, and so we can now keep track of things like this, let, uh, current cell. And let's say click current cell equals zero. And then we can say, um, selected equals, um, and I, this is where I'm getting a little, we're playing, we're getting a little funky here, but I can say, I think current cell equals I'm curious if that works. Uh, if blocks, they do their if blocks like this. That's okay. Uh, I think I can say on my cell now, um, if the cell is selected, export let selected, and I will say, I think I'm just going to play this. Um, I don't know. Let's let's get a little fancy. Um, blocks can't be selected, so let's say cell selected and I don't know. Trying to find a way to uh, mark a cell as have a boolean class for whether a cell is selected. If that worked, I don't see it. <laughs> oh, that's because I don't have a class for it. Selected, I don't know. Background. 
what's the background color? Let's just say EF, light blue. Aha, and that does work. DFF, I don't know. Let's just, we're playing with colors here. Great, okay. And maybe outline 2px solid black. So when it's selected, it'll actually have like a thick stroke around it. Assuming I know how outlines work and I know how refresh works. Ah, and last things, last thing but not least thing, Z index one, so it kind of pops above the rest of them. Cool. So now you can see um, that uh, the first cell is selected. I can't change it. <laughs> Let's figure out how to change it. So if I click on a cell, I'd like to select it. Um, so next up is finding out how to handle a click. Looks pretty basic. Um, so on mouse move, handle mouse move, but, but we don't, we're not doing that. We are doing, um, how am I using it so far? So I actually, this is, I've only toyed with examples, Flint Steel 7, um, who asks how am I liking Svelte so far? Uh, yeah, uh, I have, this is, I've only played with examples. I'm finding this pretty productive. I feel like I'm getting a lot done. Um, maybe that's just because I have familiarity with existing UI frameworks. Uh, I think there's probably a little bit that I have familiarity with existing UI frameworks and a little bit that uh, I think it's pretty nice. I think it's pretty light. I think it's got a lot of pretty good ergonomics, like being able to have proper if blocks and stuff like that. Seems pretty good. Um, I am curious whether I've written the word undefined on the rest of these. I have written the word false. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Uh, I wonder how to get around doing that. I'll leave it for the time being. That is funny, though. Uh, yeah, I dig it. I, th I think I'm having a nice time with it. Uh, next, I'll make it so if I click a cell, it's going to be on click. There's an API for, there is an API for classes. Thank you. I completely bopped over that. Oh, these are equivalent. Oh, okay, class active. And you can do multiple toggles. And then can you also, also use class? Yeah, I think that'll probably work. So all of this code, which is cool, I should be able to say class cell, class block, class selected. Think that's the shorthand for it? And I can actually drop this if. We'll see how that compiles and see if I, in fact, read that correctly. When name and value match. Yeah, look at that. Still ran. Oh, I didn't refresh. Errors. Block is not defined. Oh, because it's not. It's block equals type block. Handle mouse move is not defined. I agree. We're going to do handle click instead also because we're not actually. So handle click. Um, let's make that function and let's go back to taking a look at DOM events. Thank you for that pointer, uh, P17. I really appreciate that. That made all the difference. And that is, yeah, that is actually a really, really nice syntax for Boolean attributes. So uh, event handlers lets me do stuff like this. Um, what we actually want to do, and I actually, I, I did a little, I took a little bit 
what I actually want to do is play with these event forwarding messages, right? So I actually want to create an, a create an event dispatcher. That's interesting. Uh, what that's going to let me do is tell um, is tell my, the grid that I have been selected, um, or tell the grid that hey something has changed. Um, so I think I can. Um, Okay, so they're using what's called an event dispatcher. And that lets me create an event dispatcher. And then I can say dispatch cell click. And uh, I'm not sure if I can include this. So I'm just going to say index and pass the index along. Not sure if it's implicitly passed, like which cell was clicked, but we're going to use um, and then we need to handle it at the at the grid level. Um, so on on my grid, I can now say okay. I'm going to start reformatting this a little bit because that's a lot of stuff, and it's also becoming a little bit unwieldy. There we go. So on message actually become yeah, it's handle message. I think that that with the um, the event type was called, or is that the custom? No, it'll actually be on cell click handle cell click. We'll write a function for that. My guess is that this is going to contain event information, and we should call it a lot. Cardell, thanks for joining. Uh, yeah, um, this has been fun so far. I think you should definitely tune back in. Unexpected token in grid.svelte. Right, this is not a class. I keep doing that. <laughs> but thanks for joining us now. Um, you should totally see how we got there. Cool. So I believe, am I logging anything? My stuff getting passed along or did this not work? Okay. No error, but on cell click, handle cell click, on click, handle click. Refresh. I'm gonna just log this stuff um, just to see what's going on. Also, make sure my locks just roll to the bottom. There we go. There is a click. Uh, my dispatch doesn't seem to be. Oh, and it gives all kinds of nice stuff there. Um, it, so I probably do, but you'll notice that the dispatch doesn't seem to be. Create event dispatcher. Let's go take a look at what that looked like again. Do I need to declare that it's a thing that happens? Say hello, dispatch, dispatch is a message. On message. I put camel case in here. There's a good chance that camel case is not what it wants. Oh, my cat, it's, it's now time for my kitty. That's all right. Not sure if you can hear that. Um, so in grid, I'm going to just lowercase this stuff on the off chance that this is a, to forward the event from the child to the parent, you use on event, no function. No event, no equals function. Can I just forward straight up? Is that what you're telling me? Let me go. There's a forwarding thing. I should just take, maybe I should write that one. On message, handle message. Say hello, dispatch message. So the outer contains the inner, and it just says on message. The inner says on click, 
and that so that's going to create the message i see what you're saying p17 but um this is only one layer there's only it's not i'm not necessarily doing forwarding it's just i have an event called i have this event um I have this event, like which in my function looks like this. So I'll click and and I'm only going up one layer. Just saying the docs for component events. Yeah, I must be missing something. I guess I could just forward the click, but I kind of want to dispatch a specific thing. Um, I'm trying to figure out why this is not working nicely with this. Refresh, look around. Yeah, see, we're seeing, but we're not getting to here. Even though I am, oh, mm -hmm. uh, another another fun bug. The bug is I wasn't listening to the cell. I was listening to my div. Maybe someone maybe someone called that out. Uh, maybe I missed it. But this was a fun another another goofy bug. I need to attach the listener. There. Maybe that's what you meant, P Sabatini. Uh, but that should fix it. And it does. Now I have a cell click. Um, and I believe, do I get data from that? Does that include a data property that lets me detail index? Yep, cool. Back in business. So I can say cell click if I say event.detail.index. I'll now. Yeah, completely over my head too. Uh. <coughs> That's funny. So now if I click, you can see, um, you can see it's tiny numbers for you. But down here in the logs, it is logging. Um, I'll bump up the font size of my console. But you can see that it is in fact logging the cell. And as opposed to logging the cell, if I say current cell equals, um, I think it should be as simple as that. And now if I click, perfect, look at that. Now I have the ability to select arbitrary cells by clicking. I'm a fan. Um, I'm wondering if I can do double click. I wonder if double click is a DOM event or a, a synthetic event that it will let me listen to. That'd be cool. I, I, I mentioned that for a very specific reason. Uh, double click events felt. Loading editor. I guess I could just do a test with one of theirs. Events, dumb events, on, double click. I, I always forgot the double, whether double click is an event or if it's a synthet synthetic event. It's on the, it's sure as heck on its way to being Minesweeper P Cartel. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Um, um, so next up, we want to handle letters. I'm not 100% certain where the letters are getting captured. So we're going to... Um, Maybe we want to make the individual cells selectable. It's always hard to know whether you want the cells to be selectable or the thing above them to be uh, tab indexable. Um, I feel like arrow events should be handled at the grid level. We're gonna say, um, this now we are gonna say on key press handle press. 
we're gonna say. Say if event dot key. Uh, what is it? I should log what these are. Cause I actually know the top of my head. There's a dot key is like the new magic property uh, that modern browsers support, where you can actually it'll log like pretty values for things. I don't know if you've ever used it, it's really nice. It'll let you log things like. Arrow, it'll say like arrow left. Is it a table? No, it's not a table. It's CSS grid. It's going to be a crossword puzzle. Uh, B. Cardell. Um, handle key press. Let me get spelled that differently. No, oh, it's spelled the same. And so now I think I need that event for forwarding. I don't know if you can see that. But I feel like now I need that event forwarding, forwarding uh, that we were talking about. Um, so I can actually say cell. on key press. And if I refresh, gosh, I wish all refresh was working again. It wasn't, that's a bummer. Uh, it's trapping my letter Fs. <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. The letters I'm pressing are totally getting captured, but my arrow keys are not. Let's try key down and try key down over here. So I want to, I really want to capture those arrow keys. Okay, so key down is what I needed. Okay, so while we are in selected town, I could now say event key equals arrow right, right? And I can say e dot default because I don't want to prevent, or I want to prevent, uh, I want to prevent uh, the uh, scrolling of the page. So I can say e dot prevent default. Current cell will just be lazy and say plus plus, right? Or equals current cell cell plus one. And then actually we need to mod that over cell stop length, just in case we wrap around. So now, if I click on a cell, I select it. If I hit the, uh, it's not E, it's event, because I was being verbose. Um, so it's not event, it's E, it's event. Um, and we can see that now, if I click on a cell, I hit the arrow right, I didn't refresh. If I hit the E and arrow right, I can seek to the next clue. And more importantly, if I shrink this down, if I go to the very last clue, and I go to the end, it wraps back to the beginning. Cool. So this was an easy one. Uh, I can do... Keep, uh, key handling, by the way, is always a mess. Sometimes I think, sometimes I feel like I want to do... Um, sometimes I feel like I want to do... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, like a switch statement. Sometimes I want to do ifs. I can never decide. Uh, we're going to stick with ifs for the moment. Uh, um, Current cell minus one. Um, I don't like how Modulo and JavaScript works. I just want the record to show that. I think Modulo and JavaScript works wrong because this doesn't work. What this is going to be is negative one. <laughs> like, I don't think that's correct, right? Like what that's gonna be is, ne is negative one. And there's no version of this where negative one is correct. So there is a, kind of a trick we can do, which is minus one plus cells that length, with, or sorry, minus, yeah. And that's going to guarantee that it's always wrap into the positives. Trust me. You're just gonna have to trust me on that. As long as I never increment by more than cells.length, 
that will work, but it always annoys me. Now I'm going to do that with up and down also. And instead of, it's obviously, instead of going by increment, this is a cool trick. I know how big the puzzle is, so I can say by size and by size minus cells.length. Sorry, plus cells.length. And that guarantees that I stay in my zone. Oh, except for this needs to be arrow up. Cool. So now I refresh. And I name my variables correctly. You can see the down arrow, up arrow, left arrow, right arrow. I can now seek. I can now seek around the puzzle. And verifying that if I go off one end, and also I believe if I go off the next end, believe they keep me in column eight. Yeah, I could potentially shift over, but at the minimum, it's letting me wrap. And I find that to be, I just wanted to be able to wrap. Uh, maybe I need to, in fact, maybe I need to wrap differently, be toroidal both times, but this, this works for me. Um, cool. So I have basic keyboard navigation. And now I'll be able to type keys. Mouse drag select. Um, well, I'm only ever gonna, ever, uh, HTTP 7 I'm only ever potentially going to want to be able to select one cell because I'm editing a puzzle. But I see what you're saying. Hmm. I think the next thing I want to do is blocks. Because I think blocks are where this gets really interesting. Um, so I'm actually going to make it so if I say if event.key and I'm just picking a thing at random here. I'm going to say period. You press period on a cell, it's going to set it to be a block or set it to not be a block if it is a block. So I can now say if, um, if cells current cell dot type equals block. cells current cell dot type equals um say let cell equals cells current cell because we actually need to be able to there we go if cell dot type equals block we will reset it to letter. And otherwise we will set it to block. So now we have the ability to toggle blocks on our puzzle. Um, once this reloads. Now I can click on a cell, I press period, did not do the thing I wanted. It did not do the thing I wanted, but it also didn't do the thing I wanted. So let's inspect and see what's going on. I inspect this cell, it's selected. I press period. It sure, it sure as heck doesn't. And I know why. Because I did. No, that looks right. Class block. That said, I wouldn't know because my backgrounding was in the wrong order. Let's take a look now. Yeah, it's not toggling. Okay, so we can figure out why that is. Perhaps it's not triggering an invalidation. What's our current project? Light case idea. Let's go in there and take a look at what Light case idea's thing is. 
let's see if it's invalidating it properly. So, uh, destroy block, um, type, there we go. So there's your toggle class for the thing. I wanted key press. Okay. And there you can see that it looks like what's happening is that I'm not invalidating the cell. Cells is not, there's no invalid. You can notice, you can see here, invalidation, 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 invalidation. No invalidation, so this is not triggering a reactive moment. So let's figure out how we do that. Maybe we need to call. Maybe we need, actually we need to like send a dis, send an event downward, <laughs> which is interesting. And I don't know how we do that. So let's maybe we need stores. So I could do the dumb thing. Here. The dumb thing is when I mutate these, I say cell equals cell. <laughs> I'm reassigning cells to itself. I'm invalidating, effectively, I've invalidated the list of cells. Um, and then if I press period and I refresh, yeah, that toggles it to dark. I think that's a little lame. And I'm wondering if there's a, a more elegant way to do that. Because really what I'm doing is I'm mutating something on the cell. Um, so maybe I could be, there's, there's a more idiomatic way to cause this to happen at the cell level. I guess there's nothing about, I guess like, because I want to listen for arrows up here. But I want to listen to um, periods at the cell level. I wonder if I can, I don't know, let's find out. Let's play around. Um, I go into the cell and I also add a key handler. Right? I actually make this a real key handler. On key down. I write a, it has its own internal handle key press. Then I can just say if type lock type, I'll free format this in a second. <laughs> Um, uh, type lock. Right, this is a function, which is one of the reasons it's not handling it. Okay, function handle key press, format this properly. So, uh, if I do this, will it handle the key press at this level? Arrow keys still work. That's cool. On key down, handle key press. On click, handle click. Sorry, I'm just reformatting this for readability's sake. Um, okay. Maybe I, maybe this function just isn't being called properly. That's a lot log, event, event key. I'm wondering if I can respond to events at multiple levels of my component.
Doesn't look like it, does it? Dom events. Let's read this again. Haley's going to be cleared in line with a performance penalty. I was paying attention to is, is there an error? No, there isn't an error. What's interesting is that the handler It's a key press. Doubly interesting. Oh. Which ones did I remove? Or did I not actually remove it? I didn't actually remove it. I'm trying to remove this binding, sorry. I'm trying to remove this binding temporarily, because if I remove it temporarily, then I can find out whether um, the lower handler will work. Interestingly, the lower handler doesn't work, which tells me I have a bug. Okay, on click on key down equals handle key press. Handle key press is right here, and that function is not being called. I'm going to guess that that is. A click is. Does this have to do with tab index? Is this a tab index thing, folks? Do I make this tab index zero? And take the tab index zero off of this? Dom events bubble, <laughs> unless I'm mistaken, Dom events bubble. And that means that, yeah. And that works. I mean, on the fact that I think I mistyped something that works. Yep, there's my bug. Okay, not all DOM events bubble. Yes, but key events bubble, right, B. Cardell? I feel like key events bubble. I feel like that's like a, that's like a capital T thing. And so if Svelte is intervening to make them not bubble, that's kind of a bummer. Maybe key down is not an event that bubbles. Maybe I'm wrong. Handle key press. Let's just restore it. It 
Different ghost, I'm liking Svelte. I actually think I'm, I'm having a nice time with it. You know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna take advantage of these nice components. Assuming You know, look, my tabs are getting captured. Like, I don't know what's going on, but I feel like I maybe we pop this into a new window. Make sure I'm not dealing with some weird and bad behavior. That was funky. Aha. So now because I have I've left I Tab, these are tabable. I yeah, I'm gonna take that out. I don't like that. I can't capture keys on them because they're not tab indexable. I suspect. I suppose that's sensible. Key down event tab index. That, that might just be a DOM thing that I'm just is going right over my head. That's all right. Um, I'm gonna assume tab index. Listen to key down event div and react and tab index to violate your handler. Yep. Okay. Uh, B card now, so I'm struck in a puzzle here where um, I want the cell to be, when I type, I want the cell to be able to toggle. I'm running into a data flow thing. I feel like that's the story of every single one of <laughs> projects that I do on stream is I, I eventually end up running into data flow where like, okay, so if I handle key press here on the grid, right? And I say tab index equals zero. I can capture events here, but in order, but when I update, when I update the state of the cell, I'm manipulating an array. And that means that like, I want to be able to, uh, it's weird. Maybe I can just say, maybe I can just say, Can, it, can components export other things other than props? Can I export functions? Can I? It doesn't seem correct. I don't think I should be able to, but now I'm curious. It's neat. Um, Yeah, I'd much rather, I'd much prefer not to, is the reality of the situation. I would much, much, much rather handle this at the outer layer. I'd much rather do everything right here. Right, they want me to do, so what they want me to do is an immutable thing. This is what I'm realizing. They want me to just, so I don't want to have index on each cell. There's no way I can get key events. You're totally right. Um, what they want me to do is say toggle, say toggle block cells current cell and effectively do a kind of like this this whole like I mean I understand this is like the niceness of like immutable data structures and stuff like that, but functionally, functionally they want me to say um, toggle block 
Excel index. And then I will have to say cells equals cells dot slice zero cell index minus one. Right, I need to construct, they want you to effectively do a splice. So it's gonna be cell, cell index minus one, uh, cells dot slice cell index plus one. And then in the middle, my new cell. So type block. Uh, index I feel like this is what they want me to do and if I do this assuming I typed everything right and roll up did an error it didn't now uh, what am I missing did I unbind my nonsense I didn't find it to the right spot is the problem. So I need to put it here. Yep, I have arrow key support. Uh, that's fun. I obviously have a off by one error there. Probably just need to do that. Um, did I get that wrong? So now you can see that this works because I'm completely reconstructing the cell object. Um, so let's say let new cell. If cell old cell equals cells dex old cell dot type block cell equals And then I reconstruct the array. Okay, I don't love that. I will accept it as the cost of doing business in a reactive world. Ooh, my clue. Oh, this is fun. Uh, I Because I'm modifying the cell list, I now need to say, new number cells, new number cells. Wonder if I can actually make that reactive as well. That'd be cool. But for the moment, Oh, and of course this isn't working either. Okay, so yeah, what I'm learning is that this is where stores, I think I need to be keeping my cells in a store. I think I agree with you, Peace Abatini. Um, we are reaching 3 p.m. and I just wanted to show you where I've gotten. Um, obviously, this is not complete. <laughs> That's, I, think, I think we can all agree that what I've built is not finished, but I'm actually really pleased with it. Um, I feel like this is a great example. I think I might keep pushing forward with building this in Svelte. I feel like it's a nice, it's been a nice, uh, pretty fairly ergonomic experience. 
Um, and I feel like it, uh, now that I'm, I think once I wrap my head around stores, maybe we'll do a part two next week with stores. Maybe that'd be fun. Um, we could, uh, I think we're going to get somewhere that I, that I am excited about. I feel like that's the next part is because up until I ran into this data issue, I feel like all of this clicked for me. It felt very natural. Um, and I want, um, I think I want to pursue building more things in this uh, framework. I like it a lot. Thank you so much for tuning in this week. I'm going to do a little bit of outro polishing. Um, and, but yeah, hope have a great week. See you on glitch.com.